Warning, this video features one or more ships that are primarily acquired through gambling mechanics. The chance of winning such ships is very low, and there's no guarantee that you will win regardless of how many times you gamble. If you think you might have a problem with gambling addiction, please stop the video and seek help immediately. Greetings everyone and welcome to another Starship Review. Today we're going to take a look at the Section 31 Intel Science Destroyer. Why am I reviewing this ship now despite the fact that it's been in the game for a while? It turns out that the trait from this ship is very useful for keeping yourself stealth most of the time, which is something you might want to do if you're trying to solo a task force operation like Infected Space, which is possible now that we're allowed to make private queues with a, without a full group. So, despite not being a new ship, it's managed to become relevant again due to recent developments. The ship itself is perfectly fine and belongs to a small subset of ships that can transform and change their captain seat. The novelty of that alone helps to offset some of the other mediocre aspects of the ship. Because when it gets right down to it, you basically have a choice between a decent science vessel and a mediocre escort. The science mode, which is default, disables the experimental weapon and activates the secondary deflector. The tactical mode, which is innate and does not require a console, enables the experimental weapon at the expense of the secondary deflector. It's more complicated than that as other things are affected, such as base stats and sensor analysis to name a few, but suffice it to say that the adjustments convert it between what you would expect from a science vessel and what you would expect from an escort. It retains the 4-3 weapon layout in either mode, which in my opinion makes the science mode a better. Then you have to factor in that it has 5 science consoles, but only 4 tactical consoles. It can do both things, but it clearly favors the science mode. It also has a regular cloak called Dark Mode, which is nice for a Federation vessel. As a full Intel ship, it has active sensor arrays. It also comes with a unique experimental weapon that we'll look at in a moment. So, they haven't skimped on the extras. However, despite having two specialization seats, they're both Intel, so it falls a bit flat there. Intel has reclaimed some of its former glory thanks to solo queues, but it's best as a second seat and not the primary specialization. I have the most to say about the trait, so let's look at the other stuff first. The console enhanced tractor drones gives accuracy and EPG as passives. The clicky does kinetic damage, disables the enemy cloak, and slightly pulls the target towards you. You get a charge every 40 seconds, up to 3 charges max. To be honest, I don't notice anything happening at all when I use it, and the damage output is very low. The visuals just look like a beam array, so it gets lost in the visual noise. If you happen to be in the market for a tickle ray, then this might just be the console for you. Otherwise, it's pretty underwhelming. The experimental weapon, Invasive Coil Gun, is especially nice to see considering that we don't always get new ones and this ship in particular is a science vessel first and foremost. It deals kinetic damage with 50% shield pin and after building up 5 stacks on the same target, it takes their subsystems offline and deals electrical damage. It's thematic for a stealthy intel ship and the effect of knocking subsystems offline gives it a use case outside of just damage, which few weapons will overcome while the wave impeller is around. The trait Exodus Acta Probat is a very good trait that gives you three substantial buffs for 20 seconds when you activate either an Intel Bridge Officer ability or jam sensors. These three buffs include 40 control expertise, 15% Cat 2 weapon damage, and 500 stealth. Repeated activations refresh the duration rather than stacking. The weapon damage and control expertise probably speak for themselves, but the stealth needs explaining. There is a three component combo that drastically improves survivability. First, it uses one or two copies of Intel Team. Mathematically, you only need one if all your ducks are in a row, but two gives you some safety net. Those activations not only trigger the second component, the stealth from this trait, but also gives you targeting stealth, which is a different thing. 
The targeting stealth only lasts for 9 seconds, and Intel team has a 15 second minimum cooldown, so we need the third component, fresh from R&R, which is a personal space trait that brings it down to 10 seconds. What does all this mean? I'm going to release another video in the future explaining all this in more detail and providing some alternative configurations that don't require the trait. But I'll give you the short version now. Stealth prevents enemies from seeing you. It's not a binary like a light switch, but a gradient. And in fact, it's a skill just like all the other skills. Unfortunately, it's not listed under your ship stats. The more stealth you have, the closer you can get to enemies before they can see you, once you've accounted for their perception. Cloaks usually give you a large amount of stealth so that they function the way you would expect, but take away your ability to attack while it's up. That doesn't mean you can't have stealth without a cloak, though. Targeting is a completely separate beast. Once an enemy has you targeted, you are pretty much screwed. Stealth can help you avoid getting targeted in the first place, but once you've been targeted, stealth will not help you. Breaking an enemy target on you is its own separate thing, and in fact there's a boff power just for it called Evade Target Lock. You can also use jam sensors or any placate, but they don't really come in AoE form, so the targeting stealth you get from Intel team prevents you from being targeted in the first place. It's this combination that lets you avoid getting fired at. The regular stealth prevents enemies from detecting you, and the targeting stealth prevents enemies from targeting you. However, it's not foolproof. There is a 1 second window every 10 seconds where you're not protected by targeting stealth, and that assumes perfect ability activation and cooldown management. The regular stealth isn't foolproof either, as 500 stealth is quite small compared to an actual cloak. What you are getting is overlapping protection that covers each other, but you're still subject to AoE damage that is targeting something near you, and if you do get targeted, you'll need a placate or some other method to break it. The potency of this combination is very effective and is far ahead of other methods for handling solo content, such as stacking survivability and just tanking the damage, which is a viable option for advanced but not elite. I know that was a lot to take in and I'm going to be going into more detail in a future video, but suffice it to say the trade is a central component in the best known strategy for doing solo TFO content on the harder difficulties. Okay, let's do the ratings. In terms of performance, I'm going to give it 4 stars for the science mode and 2 stars for the tactical mode. It's an alright ship. The strengths and weaknesses kind of remind me of the Anorax. They both have some extras, such as 7 weapon slots, but both suffer from only having intel seating. Still, it's a solid choice. I'd avoid the tactical mode altogether, as it just turns it into a second-rate escort, and personally, I think it looks terrible in that mode anyway. In terms of accessories, it can only be 5 stars. The console is a clunker in my book, and the experimental weapon is passable, but the whole reason I'm even reviewing this right now is because of the trait. There are a lot of good traits out there, but few that can define an entire build style or prop up an entire content mode created by the players. In conclusion, it's a perfectly good ship that you'll probably be happy to fly if you like science vessels, but the trait is the real pearl here. If you can just get the trait as KDF, then I'd recommend that. If you're Federation, then it's probably worth it, or you can wait until I release my video on alternatives to see if that suits your fancy better. Either way, the value is there if you want to do solo TFO content on higher difficulties. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe so you can see more of my content in the future. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.